this project just reached to a halt. This does not fit in there at all. What's up everybody, this is Jason from Sky Blue Off-Road and if you remember my last maintenance video with my TJ, I was putting in lower control arms and uh, I didn't ever put in uppers because I was putting in what I had free. And with that, I've got the upper control arms that are adjustable now that I got off Amazon, but uh, they came with these little spacers to go in the bushing. The ones that I've got in there are actually bigger than the hole that's in the, the mount that's on the frame. The hole that's in there is smaller than this, so now I've got to go in there and do the maintenance where I drill the holes out, get the right size bolt like I should have from the beginning. I know, but whatever. I'm gonna be just crawling under the Jeep today and doing a little bit of routine maintenance. I'm also gonna adjust my pinion angle. And the main reason I went with the uppers is because of the pinion angle. The lowers, when I put those in, in the last uh, video, it pushed my axle back, which tilted down the uh, pinion angle. But now with that angle, my moto built diff cover is hitting my gas tank. But for now, we're gonna crawl under the Jeep. We're gonna pull the uppers out one at a time, drill out some holes, put in the new bright bolts and hardware. Then before we put it all back together, we're gonna actually lift that pinion up just a little bit more because at 25 miles an hour, I have a, a droning vibration. So anyway, we're gonna fix that. Got to drill this one out, got to drill this one out because of how much slap and play. There, see, it's a tight fit here, but when that same bolt's sitting here and it's locked in on each side, there's still a lot of play. So we got to drill these holes out to fit this bolt size. I can't remember if the rear one was like that, but yeah, look at that. Okay, we got to fix all this. When you're working a socket, make sure you line that little ball up, that notch, whenever it has that notch. That'll keep it from falling off and busting your teeth. Like, when you put it here, you can still pull it on and off, see? Without pushing the button in the back. But you push this in here, it ain't coming out. So, keep you from busting your teeth. All right, so here's an update on what we've got. The lens is dirty. All right, so here's what we've got. We've got this size bolt hole in the frame on the Jeep. It's not quite the right size, and that's the smallest I've got. The next size is even bigger, so. The only options I have are to try a few things. Hang on. And obviously nothing's gonna fit and there's nothing is the right size of what I'm hoping for so I've got to go into my scrap pile and try to find myself some old parts that maybe I can salvage stuff out of but hmm I'm sure it's in here Hmm, I don't think that's the one I'm looking for. That's the one I'm looking for. I'm gonna take these little guys right here out, the inserts, because they're the right size. And then uh, we'll go from there. I'm curious if the these OEM style bushings would fit in that really awkward sized thing that I got on Amazon. So we're gonna find out. Blue Jeep. All right, so out of my scrap bin, I've got my old lowers, but you can just see those are just the whole purpose of this project was to get rid of these busted out bushings. So I'm needing to go smaller like this. So I've already pulled these out. You can see it's got those little nipples or those little bumps. 
that helps keep the bolt centered so I'm hoping that I can pull this whole thing out see if it's the same size as this hole and I don't think it is because this hole came with these two bushings and this is the factory and uh, where the bolt goes it don't fit it's just it wiggles it's just it's, it's not the right size but this is the right size for my bolt so predicament is I'm pulling these rubber bushings out which after 500 miles I've already worn down I'm gonna try to fit an OEM in here and if I can I'm just gonna go with OEM bushings in here for now so we're gonna try that with these right now and see if we can put these in here and if so I'll just go buy new bushings and we'll go from there Man, I'm just telling you right now this is a can of worms anytime you do a project just be ready to open a can of worms because it's one thing after another There's nothing's gonna go right and if it does well well that's pretty good actually thought I'd show you guys my first Jeep back in 2000 um, 2006 we went on mosquito pass and this is me my very first Jeep my WJ 3 inch lift 33 inch tires and at 13,185 feet yep Videoing and working is proving to be a bit of a challenge for me because I'm losing parts. Anyway, back at it. This project just screeched to a halt because this does not fit in there at all. So with that, I am going to try and make these work uh, that came with it. In order to do that, I need to push this out, which is the original bolt size hole, and then go from there on figuring out what to do. So here's where we're at. What's gonna happen is I'm going with the OEM inside this because this hole doesn't fit OEM. It's bigger. So the plan is go ahead and use these bad boys. And I'm also gonna use the factory, which you can see not gonna work right. But what I have done, um, it's all weather, it's rubber, bushings are rubber. Man, I'm just looking for a gap fill. So I don't know if you can see down in there, I don't know if I can get a good shot of it or not, but I've taken a piece of this and made it that size and lo and behold, look at here. It's a tight fit. I'm going to run this for a while. It's better than what it is. It can't get much worse than what it was. Uh, this is actually going to be tighter. Even if it's for a few months, it's better than what I had. So we're going to knock that out, take care of that. And that's going to be the end of this project because I don't feel like drilling out holes. Which, if this doesn't work, I'm going to be drilling holes. But that's okay. It's another day. I push that rubber piece through, and it seats up really nice in there. It, it's done overlapping. It makes it to where it is really tight. Uh, right now, the problem I'm having is it doesn't go all the way through, so I had to do this other small piece here. Then put a little bit of lube on it. And this should... in there tight enough to where I don't think it's going anywhere and then I just trim the excess now will this work for long term probably not but will it get me through a good good couple of trails until I can figure out what exactly I'm gonna do with this rear end this bolt fits in there really nice and it don't wiggle around like it did before 
So we're gonna call that one fixed. So that's pretty much self-explanatory right there with how it's going to go back together. It's going to go together just the way it came apart. But first, I got to take the other side apart so that I can actually lengthen the upper so I can get that pinion angle pointed more back at my uh, slip yoke eliminator. So got a little bit of work ahead of me here. I'm just going to rinse and repeat and that's going to get us to where we are done with this and I'll check back in with you then. You're on camera now. Okay. All right. So Maggie's coming to help me with the jack because I'm going to be under the Jeep and she's going to be jacking the Jeep. So that's right here is your jack. When I tell you, you're just going to slowly go up. Okay. Gotcha. So what I've got going on here is the jack is on the pinion. If you can see, this is where the pinion is pointing. So I want to just go up a little bit more, which means I'm going to lengthen the uppers. We need to take some tension off of it. So go ahead and jack it up just a tiny bit. And so what we're desiring to do here is to get these bolts loose. So I just want you to go slow and I'll tell you when. Okay. Just real slow, go up. Whoa, right there. Okay. So that was just enough to take the tension off. So that's where these were set. Okay, jam nut is loose. Go ahead and go up, jack up. Jack. And we're watching the pinion here. Yeah, you go ahead and jack up. What that's doing is go up just a little bit more. See, it's slowly bringing this up. All right, that's probably good right there because it seems to be pointing a little bit straighter towards, matter of fact, come down very slowly. Stop, stop, stop. I think that's where we're gonna set it. Just a little bit below, so that way as it goes up. So what we gotta do now is see the holes don't line up, see? So we stretched it, sheesh, what is that, half inch? So we're gonna have to come out several turns until we get these to line up and oh and once they are lined up slide a bolt in now we'll just put a couple of bolts on here tighten the jam nut now that we know the bolts and everything's lined up we tighten the jam nut just to hold its place there for now Give that a good solid little unk just to kind of hold it. What I'm gonna do now is tighten up all the bolts and take the jack down. And um, we're gonna go from there. I just noticed something. Check this out. So one of the problems I was having was my diff is hitting my gas tank. This rib specifically right here. It's hitting just right. And now I push this top back a little bit more. How much worse that's gonna be, which there's two things that's gonna have to happen. I'm probably gonna have to do a body lift. And with doing a body lift, I can lift the gas tank an inch. And while I've got the gas tank out, I can cut this rib, the skid, I can cut this stuff out, reinforce it, uh, with just a banding, a, a one inch uh, strap welded on the top up here. So it goes without saying that I'm most likely going to be doing a body lift video and a gas tank nip and tuck video. God, man, I really hope we can do a wheeling video too, you know, because I'm starting to get itchy, man. It's been snowing. I'm ready to get some work done. I'm ready to use my welder because uh, I got another project I'm going to work on. All right, so that's pretty much going to wrap up this episode. I was able to go through all of these 
harvest the parts I needed and make them work. This is not expensive, but it's also a pain in the butt to go 30 minutes to go to a, anything pretty much. So I see several projects on the horizon. For a welding project is cut this end off right here and then take four inches out, slide that in, weld it up and make it somewhat of a stubby bumper. That's the idea. And uh, that's probably gonna be in the next couple of videos because I'm gonna get that done super fast. Then if things progress, I may have to do a body lift. And if that's the case, that's going to put me late on buying tires. I wanna build an actual back bumper for this one out of some two before tube. I'm also gonna be building the same bumper at the same time for my wife's postal Cherokee. It's really cold outside and it's been snowing a lot and ice is everywhere in the mountains. So wheeling is really not fun. So this is gonna be project season. I do freelance editing for a couple of other little channels here on YouTube. They're kind of consuming me right now because one of them is going to King of the Hammers this week. So I've got to be devoting a lot to that. So it's maybe another week or two before I'm able to put another video out. But as soon as I got the time, I'll be back. You guys, appreciate you. Thank you very much. Hit that like button, the little subscribe button with the little bell. That'll get you notifications when our next video does drop. So give me a thumbs up. I give you a thumbs up. Thank you. You guys, have a good night. Somebody came to visit me out in the garage and she, her hair's all messy, but do you like going out in the Jeeps? Yeah. What do you like about going out in the Jeeps? Uh, looking at, at all the animals. Say thanks for watching Sky Blue Off-Road. Thanks for watching Sky Blue Off-Road.